Today is March 19th, 2019, and this is episode 77 of Plane Savers. Good morning, everybody. It is minus 3 uh, degrees Celsius, which is about uh, plus 27 degrees Fahrenheit here in Red Deer. <clears throat> I know you guys have been enjoying the videos. Uh, thank you uh, for uh, all the good stuff. Yesterday's video broke some records for uh, at least the last month for views and everything, so I want to thank everybody. It was a fun one, and uh, yeah, so my father's taking off in the Baron here today, so I'm going to run in and see if I can get him to give us a quick car tour. I know a lot of people have been asking about the cars, and uh, yeah, I'm just here with uh, Electra Row here with all of these beautiful Electras. This is like only place in the world you can do this. A uh, quick note, anything that's yellow actually isn't buffalo, uh, like the Turbo Commanders. If you see yellow on an airplane, that's air spray. Uh, so people don't uh, uh, know that in particular. Air spray is, uh, is a company that is next door to us here in Red Deer, and they operate the world's largest fe fleet of Electras, all air tankers. Um, we operate uh, the, the, the only cargo Electras in the world, uh, like ZFE here. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of a, a neat little fact, but I just wanted to show you guys all these cool birds. Look at that. Covered in Electras, folks. So yeah, so Airspray, uh, they're, you know, just an amazing company. I believe they started in 1967, uh, and their founder, Don Hamilton, um, who actually, a little quick story, DTH, the DC-3 we have, um, it's not actually DTH, it's B-A-E, uh, because uh, Airspray named one of their electors DTH after the initials of Don Hamilton. A little fun fact, so yeah, so here's here's some of the electors from Airspray. You can see all the Turbo Commanders are Airspray, and they got those two beautiful hangers here in Red Deer. Uh, such a great company. A lot of ex-Buffalo guys are at Airspray, and a lot of Buffalo guys are ex-Airspray too, so that's just how aviation is. So another quick thing uh, I always, people have been saying in the comments is uh, IZU here has the round props. And uh, yeah, I think this is the only, only Electra that has the round props. Uh, again, I, I forget the Hamilton standard. Uh, Aero products. I can't. I can never get them all straight. But yeah, we normally use the square props. Uh, but this one Electra has the round props. Yeah. So, if you know more about those, uh, if prop experts, let me know in the comments. But uh, yeah. So the main thing today, and what we've been working on, is loading the C can. Uh, so a quick update to that. We got the two props. One engine's done. We're going to have to do the second engine in Montreal. Uh, but the one thing uh, I was wanted to explain to people a little bit, uh, as a little bit of a rambling thing, is that all the pre-work to what we're doing is very similar to, say, like an assembly line. You know, the quickest way to build a car is an assembly line. And in fact, EC3s were built on an assembly line very similar. Uh, some. Uh, Actually, all the parts, some of the parts were made by Ford and all that stuff. So basically, well, basically what I'm trying to say is all the stuff that we're pre-making here is going to save us in, oh, sorry, this is super icy, uh, a huge, a huge amount of time in Montreal. Basically, like if you think of the assembly line, you got the frame of the car and all the components, engines, transmissions, interiors, electronics, everything is built off-site and brought to the assembly line to save time. And that's what we're doing, is we're pre-building everything. <clears throat> so when we get to the airplane, we just bolt it on and go. Uh, if you were to bring all the pieces individually to the airplane, it could take years to get ready. And uh, yeah, you can imagine like get like a car. If you had a car and you took it right apart, you know, that's fun, eh? Taking cars apart and engines apart. But just because you have an engine and all the parts doesn't mean you have an engine until it's complete. And hopefully that makes a little sense. So what we're doing is making all the components ready to bolt on, which is going to cut the time in Montreal down like exponentially. Whew. And remember, this isn't a restoration right now. This is a resurrection. So we're trying to get the airplane flying and not so much, you know, looking nice. 
you know, I guess you, know, you guys figured that out by now. But yeah, we gotta get flying by June 6th. So we got two more days to finish up loading the sea can. That's gonna head off to Montreal. Benoit has been working tirelessly uh, to get us a parking spot, uh, which he did. Uh, thank you to the St. Hubert Airport for being awesome. Whew, yeah, a lot of stuff going on, folks. But, but my father is leaving. I want to sneak in and uh, see if we can get him to give us a quick car tour because I know you guys have been looking for that. And, uh, yeah, that's quite a bit of rambling. Hopefully that made some sense. But I like to keep you guys informed. Uh, yeah, that's what it's all about. So let's head inside and see if we can find Joe. Okay, here we go. So we got uh, we got six right here. And let's see. So, Dad, what's the story behind these ones? Oh, yeah, just like this. Push. What's the story? Well, there's no real story behind them. This is a, what they short, call a short door businessman coupe. It's a 46 Mercury. It was born and raised and lived his whole life just out of town here down by Claire's home. And now it's uh, living here. So this one here is, uh, that's what it, it looks like. It's a businessman's coupe. It doesn't have a back seat. It just has a, a ledger for the businessman's, uh, like when you pull a seat ahead. It slides out. So that's where a businessman would keep all his uh, his catalogs, eh? And this is a 41 Mercury. It's a Calgary car. And it's uh so but it is a five passenger car. And that and these are two deuces. Since I took them out of a barn here, put it in the barn in 54. And so they're they're over 50 years in a barn but they'll be uh, left as original barn finds. They, they won't be restored. They'll just be driven as original cars. That's what's what's like when the car is that old. And this car over here, something you don't see very often, it's a, it's a 39 Packard. Still has the original interior in it. And it's got the opera seats in the back like you do in a new pickup now. So that's, that's what he got. 39 Packard right out of Quebec, this car come out of a monastery in Quebec. The, uh, the priest used to drive the sisters around in his nun's car. So this car, is, this car will never break down. It's got holy water and the radiator. Okay, folks, actually the surprise was I was gonna go and take you guys to see the DC4, which we still are, but I wanted to show you this A26 and so, some of the Americans will call the B-26, depending on its configuration. Do you recognize this airplane from anywhere? Yes, folks, if you know, this is the A-26 or B-26 from the movie Always with Richard Dreyfuss and John Goodman. This is a movie airplane, very famous, sitting here in Red Deer, along with Two other A26s. Um, yeah, they've been sold a long time ago to, I guess, a, a, a former WestJet pilot or current WestJet pilot. So this is very, very cool. Hope you guys like that. And while we're over here, folks, I want to show you there's more Electras. These are all Air Sprays Electras. And my uh, father's Convair 220. T29. T29? So, uh, yeah, sorry, T T29. So this is uh, one of Buffalo's Electras here. This is IJV. Uh, did this, this flew in from England? Yeah, we brought it in from England. It used to be in the Yellowknife, or in WTR. It's just waiting to be reclaimed as a tanker. And then we got the DC-3s here. These are all being sold to Basler. Yeah, so this one to Basler, Nunacy, YQG. The old Nunacy machine. For Gimli. VQV is the Ford motor. I didn't sell that one. That's a Douglas Sleeper Transport right there. DST built by it. It's a Douglas Sleeper Transport. That's FAY. And that's Gateway's JWP. It used to be PWA. They're playing PWF to one, I think, and you start with Grace Lake Lake. I had my first ride on that one. It's Bring home on a barge, towing it. Now these three will go to Basler. That Nunacy, 
FAY Gateways JWP, which are Pacific Western PWF. That I said sunk in the east arm of Great Slave Lake, and we rescued it. And then I kept the Douglas Sleeper Transport there for it's a Ford Motor Company Douglas Sleeper Transport. Okay, this is set up as a budworm sprayer. Oil spill dispersant. We've got boom tank. It's like a cop sprayer. We've got boom tanks on it. Jump out and take pictures of it. So folks, as promised, here is uh, the DC-4 B&V. B&V was an air tanker in Hay River for, for many, many years. Ronnie basically lived on this airplane all summer fighting fires. And now it's set up for a sprayer. As you can see, the booms on the wings. Uh, set up for spraying oil dispersant or mosquito repellent or whatever you want, perfume, whatever you want. So, so Buffalo, we have actually 13 DC-4s and stuff that is complete, uh, like B&V and stuff that isn't complete. Uh, and they're actually for sale. So if you're looking for DC-4s, uh, we're the place to get them. Uh, so yeah, there we go. We bought B&V in uh, probably 1996. I brought it in uh, Quebec. Yeah, in Quebec City, that's where we picked this airplane up, yeah. Then we took it down to uh, Vita, Arkansas to paint it. It's a great bird. All ready to go. How long was the firefighting in Hay River? We had it in Hay River for 15 years, firefighting. And uh, it was a great bomber. But now we converted to a, a budworm sprayer because she was going down to on the Keystone oil spill there in the Gulf. And the other one went down, but this one... Uh, as a backup, it didn't spray like the other one did. Okay, that's the end of the episode. Hope you like that. Joe's got to jump back in the barn and head back to Yellowknife. I uh, hope you liked the tour of the airplanes, which is very, very, very cool. Uh, thank you for joining us on today's episode. We'll see you tomorrow when we're going to start wrapping up the sea can. Ronnie's going to get the engine in today. Uh, so I'll do an update tomorrow on what's in the sea can and what we need to do uh, before we get to Montreal because we're just days away, days away from Montreal. So. Yeah, can't wait to see what trouble we can get into town in Quebec, uh, but we're on track to start flying June 6th, and uh, hopefully you can join us, and yeah, see you in the next one. Bye. When we get to Montreal, Trudeau will meet us, won't he? Yeah, hopefully Trudeau, Trudeau, if you're watching this, please meet us, and uh, yeah, cheers.